Mergers and acquisitions (M&As) are a daily practice around the globe in many industries. The aims vary from achieving synergies or fast growth or innovation to simple the elimination of a competitor. It is very rare that reasons for M&As are linked to product stewardship. Maybe with the exception of some EU REIT driven supply chain acquisitions that were done to assure availability of key substances. Whatever the reason is, quite often M&As are experiments with not always the intended outcome. I look forward to discussing some useful lessons learned with Trista Chen from ERM and Volker Zobala from Evonik. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Trista, before an M&A, a company makes a due diligence. Can you say what kind of product stewardship related aspects are taken into account in a due diligence? Normally, we will um, not have a lot of access for the seller's information, for example, but then we will use some, some strategic information or questions uh, to evoke the conversation with the sellers, hopefully to get a good understanding of how they manage the product stewardship or they even don't have a management system in place, and then uh, to get a sense of the compliance of the product and chemistry, um, and also understanding what would be the key consideration that should take into the post-integration so what do you mean with post-integration merger? Because the challenge of this specific topic, normally the majority of the work in the DD time is actually done post-integration from day one. The high level during the DD time and then the deep dive normally go once the two companies have a certain agreement. Trista, do you think that for instance for the buyer Monsanto merger, all these relevant aspects on product stewardship level and compliance and EHNS issues were taken into account? Unfortunately, we were not involved in that specific transaction, so I do not have the specific information to comment. In any of the transactions, um, doesn't matter the size of it, uh, it's basically where do we see the business opportunity and value of, it, of that. And of course, any business you do, you come with the risk. It's just whether the risk is acceptable or not. And also what would be the right uh, approach actions and what it takes to address the risk in situations like a major merger that is post-integration, what should be done to mitigate and address all those risks. Once an M&A is confirmed, it needs to be executed and implemented. What kind of product stewardship related issues are taken into account in that process? You need very, very uh, detailed information at the end in order to come to the conclusion, okay, we can do this deal f also supported by, uh, from a product stewardship point of view. And uh, also, uh, do they have the same definitions of polymer, for example? Those can be some tricky areas that al always need uh, special attention. Yeah. You have IT aspects, um, but you also have people that have to work together. That's more a cultural aspect. Um, how do you see that? You can provide information to them to show you, uh, to show them that you care, that you take care, that you will not lose them, because these people you. Um, uh, you're trying to integrate into your product stewardship department or environment are, are key players because they know the products you are buying best. And how much time is needed for such an implementation and how do you avoid that it um, interrupts business continuity? I think for the topic of product stewardship it's quite important to ensure from day one that the products are ready to be sold, to be exported. Um, and as all the challenge we just talked about is quite actually quite difficult to make sure that's happened. Uh, depends on the different deal structures. If it's a shared deal, then it's much easier because the new company will be able to operate under the old company's name. That means all the permits and registrations can be continued. But if it's an asset deal that we will need to transfer everything to the new call. And the second thing is that uh, have the team resources time to success integration of the product stewardship subject. Volker, can you mention a few ingredients that helped getting a successful merger in place? First of all, it's good to have uh, a timetable. You need a clear, we are talking about a day one readiness approach. So you need clear tasks to be fulfilled at, uh, until a certain date. We need a checklist. You need um, other, let's say, um, booklets where you can refer to so that you do not have to reinvent the wheel. Um, and those and descriptions show you what you have to do first and what can be done after the day one readiness. And we are talking about an 80-20% strategy. So 80% have to be fixed for the day one readiness and the other 20% could be done afterwards together with a company or with parts of the company when, uh, you, you, are, you are selling until you are able to change them uh, accordingly, uh, accordingly uh, and, and using your own uh, company number, for example. 
communication will be quite key to make sure that people are on the same page uh, with the same objective, knowing that what they are expected and what they need in order to get a task done. Trista and Volker, thank you very much for your insights. There are many possible outcomes of a merger and acquisition. To make it a success, you need the willingness to change and common shared goals, and above all, the right and motivated people, because it's all about chemistry.